I'll take some videos of both sides of this tank, but I set this up exactly 15 days ago. Did a tank setup video about building a dirted tank based on the father fish method, the Wallstad method, as I've also learned that it is called. And I just wanted to update you guys on how things are going in the tank. This is an aquatic insect tank and I'm just testing out this dirted tank method. There was an inch of soil on the bottom with two inches of sand above it. And then a few days in, I dropped some leaf litter down onto the bottom of the substrate. I have also seeded the tank with ostracods added in a snail to perform some cleanup duties, and then yesterday a second snail, because I'm just starting to see some algae forming on the surface of the glass, and I need to employ some additional tank cleaners. I'm not running a filter in this tank at all. I've been pretty happy with the clarity of the water up to this point although the microbial balance of bacteria and fungus and then other microorganisms in the tank, including the ostracods, which are a little larger, I guess, are just starting to establish in here. I'm going to be making lots more videos about the development of this tank and then some of the other tanks that I'm building. This is a five gallon tank and I have recently put together a 45 gallon tank also that I'll be uploading some videos about. I've been posting some shorts here on YouTube in the shorts section of that tank, the 45 gallon. Just watching some diving beetles. That's a Rontus guticolis gold form, we call it there. And over here, just Working on cleaning up some algae on the living plants in the tank is this Tropisternus water scavenger beetle. You can see the air on the bottom of its body there showing as silvery. Just in front of it is a water scorpion. I just sort of threw these in here to showcase them. I don't plan to leave them in the tank long term because they are predators of some of the other things in the tank. Over on the other side there, you can see a back swimmer hanging out in the water column. I really like the back swimmers in these tanks. They really fill out the space in the tank. There's another one there over on the other side. And we'll flip around to the other side here in a moment. Just wanted to restate a couple things to catch some of you up to speed in case you missed the first video. But this is a planted tank and I simply pushed the cut stems of these plants that I got from the Father Fish website into the sand about an inch down, and they have begun to root by this point. You're supposed to keep the light on in the tank for the plants for two to four weeks at first. And you can see some root growth happening there even at some of the uh, axes, I guess, in the plants searching for their way down into the soil. Over time, this tank will develop, and especially as I put more, sorry, timer's going off um, for my dinner. As I put more leaf litter into the tank, that will help to achieve the microbial balance to a greater degree and allow the decomposition of waste products that the larger animals in the tank generate. And eventually some soil will build up here and I'll have this mostly covered with leaf litter and that will provide little micro habitat niches, I guess, for some of these organisms to breed in the tank. I'll be taking lots more video of this tank and I'll probably flip around to the other side after I take my potatoes out of the oven. Here we are on the other side of the tank and it looks a little bit more open. This is actually the side that I consider the display side of the tank. You can see that some water spots have formed up near the top. I need to run through and clean those. A few bubbles are appearing up at the top too. 
as I sort of add things in. Only 15 days, like I said now, and I did at one point get some paper towels and rest them onto the surface of this tank. You can see sort of an oily film on the top. That's not too uncommon in new tanks. It can also come off the hand oil, um, the oil from your hands, for example, too, or be residue from cleaning products if you didn't rinse your tank properly. It can come from new plants or, um, you know, working in the tank and stirring things up down below. A Dinyutus whirligig beetle there. So one of the tricks to getting this residue off the top, it may go away on its own, but some bubbles have formed also, which are common when there's a film up on top of the tank. And it may be bacterial in origin too, but you can simply take some pieces of paper towel and lay that down on the surface. And believe it or not, that will soak up this filmy, coating on the top. And if you happen to see, if in particularly if you have smaller whirly gigs than this Dinyutus right here, which is actually a pretty good sized whirly gig, the smaller ones, when the film or if the film gets thick enough, may have a little trouble navigating along the surface. But clearly you can see this whirly gig is living up to its name, whirling around in circles here on the surface of the water, their eyes above and below so that they could see what's going on in both worlds. You may see in the very center of the tank here, a very small organism zipping around. It looks like maybe, I don't know, a tiny little flea or something uh, swimming through the water. That's an ostracod, also known as a sh seed shrimp. And uh, a few of the back swimmers right there. And maybe we can find, oh, well, let's bring your attention to the damselfly larva there. Again, a little bit of algae forming on the sidewall of this tank. And so I'm going to employ some more um, red ram's horn snails in here to help with the tank cleaning. But I think the ostracods are gonna do something to get some of the algae out of the water column. And that will help tamp down any buildup of algae also. Sort of learning as I go, tweaking various var variables in the tank to figure out how to keep the water clear, to keep the algae at a minimum, um, to figure out how to get the plants to thrive with light. And of course the algae really wants to grow when there's lots of light. And just mostly enjoying the process of learning how to work with a dirted tank and just loving watching the water bugs here in this gorgeous tank. There, now it's really time for dinner. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. And please let me know if you have any questions. Your questions will probably spur me to learn even more than I've already learned. I got a long way to go, but it's going to be worth it. I'm setting up a lot more tanks, communals like this, and ones that are breeding tanks for individual species that you see in this communal. One last thing, as this Ronta scuticolis makes circles around the bottom of the tank. I do also plan to make some dedicated topic videos to address individual topics about the care and setup of these tanks.